Then, okay, I'm recording now. And um, thank you for uh, being here today. Uh, I'm very happy um, for this new lecture and about Gut Blender. Don't forget that with this Gut Blender uh, lessons, you will have, and after, of course, the, the test, uh, you will uh, receive also the Gut Blending uh, certification paddy. Uh, for both Nitrox and Trimix. That is a very, very interesting uh, thing to get from this. Um, what you are going to, uh, to talk today is about the um, blending operation regarding uh, uh, oxygen, mainly oxygen. What we... Uh, we will have five lectures, five days, uh, they are more or less uh, fixed. Uh, I still don't know if the 28th of April <clears throat> I will be attending or not. Uh, probably, uh, I hope to be in Malta, and then so we can have this lecture uh, together in presence. Uh, depends on uh, on Simon if he agrees uh, to have me in uh, Mr. Gaucha to have me in. Uh, uh, in person or not. But anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. What is on 28th April? 28th April, uh, there is the Rebreather Forum mm -hmm. uh, that, that will oh, be held okay. in, in Malta, the ATS. And then I was invited also to attend there. So, and uh, I'm trying to combine uh, my presence there also with your, uh, with the lecture. So we can meet and we can stay together there. Oh, uh, Damien. Uh, welcome. Uh, we started, but we, we didn't... Uh, uh, Damien, just a question. Are you are you a gas blender already or not? Mm, I blend gas, but I'm not certified. <laughs> okay, good. So at the end of this, you will you will have the certification. So <laughs> you can do that. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Going, uh, going ahead, uh, we started two minutes ago, sorry, but probably you had problem with uh, the connection. Uh, that, uh... I was in the wrong meeting, actually. Ah, okay, okay. But anyway, it's okay. Thank you for joining us. So, um, what, what are we going to talk in these uh, in five, five uh, lectures? Um, we will have an overall view of what does mean blending? Blending does not mean only um, creating a mix that you are going to use for breathing. Typically, uh, oxygen, uh, enriched air, nitrox, or trimix, you know, with helium. Uh, it's important to know also what is behind all this operation, meaning uh, handling the gas, providing the gas, having the right equipment, the right procedure, what is about uh, delivering the cylinder to to your customers and also from the point of view of your role and responsibility into the uh, organization uh, what is extremely important is that you must be focused on the risk that you are affording when you do blending and of course also on the on on, on what is the the general rules and the re general regulation of the place where you are uh, the, this, uh, uh, these five lessons will go through the uh, information of oxygen, 40% uh, rules, uh, which has the operational hazard that you have to avoid, uh, fire, deflagration and uh, explosion in general, and the, how to carry cylinders, uh, identification and transport. This is the, uh, the, the main topics of the lecture of today. In the next four lessons, we will talk about oxygen service and cleaning. So how to uh, clean a cylinder, for instance, uh, how to have the hoses, uh, uh, which kind of, of, of equipment you need to have for, uh, for a safe uh, blending. And then uh, we will go deeply on the standard and the regulation. And also we will talk about the oxygen cleaning, so which is the, uh, the operation to do uh, for uh, working with oxygen in pressure in uh, in a good in a good way. Uh, in the third lesson, we will talk about the oxygen and the compatible air. Uh, we will talk about uh, oil compressors, uh, uh, carbonization, uh, which has the main hazard that we will uh, 
we have to avoid when we uh, blend gas. And uh, we also we talk about the Dalton load. It is the physical uh, the physical uh, load that is behind blending for having at the end uh, the cylinder that you are going to use for for your dive. Uh, in the fourth and in the fifth uh, lesson, we are going to talk about the way of um, physically blend. Uh, nitrox uh, and uh, uh, trimix, and of course, uh, which are which are the the system, which has the available uh, equipment, uh, uh, the pros and the cons for all the the, the system. And uh, as I was saying, uh, hopefully we will be in Malta together for doing this kind of of uh, this kind of, uh, of operation together. So that would be very nice <laughs> to do and maybe going diving together. <laughs> that would be very nice. Anyway, uh, uh, if there is no other question, I, I would go through uh, the summary of what we are going to, to talk about today. So uh, first of all, we are going to, uh, to say, to talk about oxygen, we will introduce oxygen, uh, the, the source of where oxygen come from, uh, which kind of oxygen are available for um, our diving activity. And uh, we will talk about the 40% rule. So probably you already knew that, that uh, when you blend, when you blend any, any mixture, if you go below 40% of oxygen, you don't need to take particular care about the equipment, uh, the quality of the air, the, keep the, the, um, the system, and so on. And then we will discuss about this rule, where it comes from, if it is true or not, and uh, why is accepted, okay? So this is also for you, for your safety, for your, uh, um, uh, for your as I told you, a, as a manager of, of your uh, uh, activities. Um, in the third part, we will talk about the operational hazard, so uh, what we have to avoid, what we have to do, um, what we have to, um, to be careful when we, when we and our organization uh, handle compressed gas and mainly oxygen. In the fourth part, we will talk about also fire and deflagration, so deflagration detonation also, so we will <laughs> discuss about uh, all the um, all the possible hazard that could that could happen with uh, working with oxygen with oxygen under pressure. The last part uh, we will talk about uh, the the transport and uh, the um, how we are safe uh, transporting in our van, in our uh, truck, in our car uh, the cylinders which is the identification of the of the cylinders uh, how they they had to be not only tagged with the concentration but also the physical uh, stamp that must be put on the the, the metal of the of the, the cylinder on top and also we will uh, we talk about the valves um, the dean the in the yoke uh, the um, the different regulation that now uh, are ruling. Don't forget that we I will try to give you an overall information not only from the European point of view but also worldwide. So uh, because whatever you will be for your activities, you will have different rules and regulation. As I, I already told you um, when we had our lesson on the nitrox. Okay. So, if there is no no question, I could go and then I could introduce Mr. Oxygen. So, Mr. Oxygen, <laughs> I like to 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 write uh, this sentence: the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, that is that comes from uh, from the movie <laughs> of Mr. Leone, Spaghetti Western of the '60s. Uh, but is uh, it is also reported in one of the first. Uh, books that was written uh, about gas blending that was a uh, mixed gas diving that was uh, a book that was wrote in 1992 
uh, that is probably the Bible, the holy Bible for the gas blenders at the beginning of technical diving and the beginning of uh, the adventure of nitrox and trimix in the world. What does it mean? It means that oxygen is good because it's the, it's the gas that allows us to live, to, uh, to breathe and to have our metabolic activities done. But on the other side, it's, all the, it's also bad <laughs> because uh, uh, sometimes it may create uh, some problems and maybe also ugly because uh, the problems that may give us uh, are not only physiological or, uh, you know, operational, but also may have explosion, may have something that is definitely not nice to see. Uh, during this lecture, I will show you some pictures of uh, accidents that uh, uh, happens that I, I, I was uh, I was told that I was I, I was in, in contact uh, not only from the from the point of view of the court but also for medical hazard that happened you know and uh, you will see you will see what uh, oxygen can do you know can do to people and what can do also uh, to the equipment to the uh, to the compressors and to the uh, to the dive gear okay so let's start with the physical properties of oxygen uh, okay first of all oxygen that uh, the chemical formula is o2 that means that is a, that is not a, um, uh, that is not a, a noble gas but is a standard gas with a combined in a molecular of two atoms uh, is a colorless odorless gas that supports life and make combust combustion possible uh, this is something that we know, you know, it's, uh, we, if you don't have, if you don't breathe oxygen, we simply die, you know, if we don't breathe in two minutes, three minutes, uh, <laughs> we are gone after five minutes, we have a, a block of all our brain activities and then uh, it falls to death. Uh, oxygen was uh, discovered around 1770, 1774 uh, by a couple of uh, physicals. Uh, the, uh, generally, is is uh, is uh, recorded on all. The, if you go to all the uh, encyclopedia or whatever, you see that Joseph Priestley, that was a um, that um, uh, an engineer. Uh, discovered and write about uh, oxygen uh, in 1774. So if you can see, it's, uh, it's quite recent, you know, the, the, the discovery of oxygen. And um, it's extremely interesting because uh, oxygen is responsible for uh, uh, oxidation in all, uh, all the activities in our, on the earth. Uh, <laughs> Because it uh, creates rust, uh, it's, uh, it is uh, important for fire, uh, and it's a very, very active uh, molecular that uh, probably have um, combines with everything. There are just few, very few uh, components, chemical components that is not there that is that cannot be combined with oxygen. Uh, very, very few. Uh, so um, that's, that means that oxygen itself doesn't burn. So uh, it is not that, that uh, it's oxygen itself, but it creates the condition for other uh, stuff, other chemical components burn. So it's extremely important to control the oxygen and avoid to have uh, problems on this uh, handling of oxygen. Um, interesting, oxygen is heavier than air. So what does it mean? Means that when you uh, blend, uh, when you use uh, oxygen or you breathe oxygen, uh, you will have uh, on the bottom of your room a higher concentration of uh, oxygen. Uh, it's like uh, carbon dioxide that is even heavier than than oxygen. So when you uh, when you go, for instance, in the cavern, so you have to see. Uh, if there is any CO2 on the floor, so and that is extremely important when you, for instance, go in uh, cave diving and then you emerge 
or in a cavity, and uh, you must be very, very careful to breathe the air that you can find inside this cavity because it may be full of carbon dioxide. Uh, but of course, we are uh, concentrating now on oxygen, and uh, I, I would tell you just to be careful. So don't forget that when you blend uh, oxygen, when you leave oxygen in air, oxygen will uh, stay on the floor. Uh, and that would be extremely, extremely dangerous because if there is any sparks, if there is any anything uh, or something happening, uh, it may be dangerous. So this is why you must take care of that. Uh, luckily, oxygen is very easy to, to detect because there are oxygen analyzers uh, uh, very easily avail available, easily available, and um, it is possible to it is possible to control, to check the concentration. It's very, I, I, I invite you to do that when you blend oxygen, when you leave oxygen in the air, to go with your oxygen analyzer, just put on the floor, and you will see that the increase of oxygen in, uh, in the atmosphere or, or where you are. Uh, last information is that oxygen uh, uh, liquefies at uh, 178. Uh, uh, Celsius uh, negative. Uh, we will we will talk about the liquid oxygen after. So you will uh, we will uh, we will see. Uh, then there is another information that is hidden by the by the slide. I had to I had to better uh, yeah I had to better sorry sorry sorry. Mm, let me see if I can. Okay, here we go. Uh, the molecular weight of uh, of oxygen is okay. Here I, I made the correction. Is uh, sixteen uh, uh, molecular uh, units. Uh, so that is useful uh, if you want to calculate uh, the concentration or to uh, or if you want to go from um, uh, to ppm uh, to uh, concentration and or uh, weight uh, in gram for the for the concentration because uh, some regulation around the world are written in uh, in uh, fraction meaning uh, ppm or uh, or a percentage or in milligram or gram per cube meter and so then you need to do the the the, the conversion and the conversion needs to have the molecular weight for 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 being successful so okay uh, let's go ahead. Um, let's talk about the five types of oxygen that we can get uh, if we if we pick up the phone and we call our gas supplier and we ask uh, for the oxygen. So uh, the the most uh, common uh, oxygen that is used that is, that is uh, uh, the most used uh, in the world is the welding grade. So that is used for uh, for welding, and uh, that it could be used for breathing. But even I don't suggest to do that. So use that welding grade oxygen only if you are really really in. A, in a deep problem, you have a problem, so maybe you need to uh, deliver oxygen to for some pathology from medical assistance, and then you are totally out. And then in that case, just you may use this kind of, of, of oxygen, not uh, for standard operation. Also, because if some accident will happen, you know, we will be in trouble if you if you discover that you use this kind uh, of oxygen. Uh, the other the other grade the available grade of oxygen is the the, the medical uh, that is called USP in uh, uh, in America in you uh, in Europe is called the EU EP that means uh, the pharmacopeia uh, or medical grade so it, it is a pharmacopeia is a is a is a manual is a uh, is a <clears throat> A concentration of all the information about the medical, the medicine, drugs, and so on. And oxygen is considered the drug. And then he has his own uh, concentration, uh, the rules, uh, how to to be considered a medical oxygen. Uh, we will talk later, of course, of all these kind of the types of oxygen. Uh, the third is the aviator grade that is used in uh, in aviation, typically. 
uh, that also that, that is it could be good, you know, if you need to if you have available this kind of oxygen, uh, it it is good for our for our breathing necessity. The only the only difference is that is drier. So then we will talk why. Um, the other the other type of oxygen that is available that is commercially available is the liquid. Uh, liquid means uh, cold. It is uh, below 173 degrees, as we uh, we were talking before in the in the, in the previous slide. And uh, mm, the last oxygen available is the food grade. Uh, food grade sometimes is the only oxygen that is really available in uh, in some countries, uh, such in Italy. In Italy, the, the medical oxygen, uh, in theory, <clears throat> cannot be delivered to anybody if is not uh, uh, if there is no uh, medical prescription uh, because it's considered a, a, a drug. Oxygen. So in theory, you could not go to a gas uh, provider and ask for a medical grade oxygen. In reality, it happens, luckily. <laughs> but if you are in a, in a problem, if you are if you have problems, uh, the only way of uh, of using uh, and of uh, having a good oxygen, good meaning uh, breathable, is to to go and buy the food grade to have the food grade. Uh, type that is totally exactly the same of the of the pharmacopoeia, but doesn't have the re the restriction uh, of the of the medical one. So that depends on the country where you are. Well, let's go ahead and uh, with the the first <laughs> important uh, note: don't use. Uh, the welding uh, oxygen uh, for uh, en enriching air for having nitrox or for blending nitrox. Uh, why? Uh, typically because the, the breathing grade oxygen, meaning the medical, the, the food or the um, um, avionic, the aeronautic, is, um, is filled in cylinder uh, that are uh, drawn before they go to be filled again, refilled. They went <clears throat> vacuum, so means that the old, uh, old gas that is, no matter which gas was contained before, <clears throat> is totally drained out before be refilled. Uh, the welding cylinder are not. Uh, it meaning that uh, when you have uh, oxygen for welding, uh, it is simply refilled from uh, the previous uh, the previous uh, use that may be <clears throat> not totally empty, and uh, it's quite common that in uh, in the welding mix uh, the gas may contain, uh, for instance, uh, some track of argon uh, that. Okay, argon is not uh, toxic, but may contain also carbon monoxide, acetylene, and on other hydrocarbons. So be careful. Uh, I don't know if you already I already told you about this uh, this issue that we had uh, three or four years ago. Uh, so I was I was uh, informed by our uh, distributor in Russia uh, that it was. Um, uh, he avoided a big accident uh, because he blended the uh, trimix for his rebreather. He was going uh, uh, to dive uh, with some fellows in a cave at 130 meters, so a deep depth, a depth, uh, very deep uh, dive, and uh, with the rebreather, and they they were using um, helium for uh, for blending. Uh, did you already told you this story or not? Hello? No, oh, I don't think so. Ah, okay, 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 sorry, sorry. I, I go ahead. I'm sorry because my memory sometimes <laughs> go down. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, then he, uh, after a while, he, invi he informed me that uh, when he blended the, the, the Trimix uh, uh, cylinder for the rebreather, 
uh, luckily he had the carbon monoxide analyzer because the the cylinder were containing around 130 ppm of carbon monoxide uh, and don't forget that the regulation the normal regulation for the carbon monoxide is 5 ppm so it means that uh, breathing 130 ppm 150 ppm of carbon dioxide they may have uh, um, a dangerous dose let me say lethal dose of, uh, that could have killed them. Uh, what happened? Simply, they used the uh, helium, a helium cylinder that was used uh, previously. Previously, with uh, was filled with argon, and uh, in the argon mix uh, for welding, uh, they put uh, one percent of carbon monoxide. One uh, percent of carbon monoxide means ten. 10,000 ppm. So they didn't drain properly the, the cylinder, they just filled the, the helium on top, but they left some, uh, uh, some carbon monoxide uh, in, the, in the cylinder. So uh, that happened in Russia, so be careful when you, <laughs> whenever you, uh, whenever you use uh, the helium, if you are not a very, very sure of the source, even it's always better to do a, a test, a check uh, if there is no, no contaminant. So, but this is why mainly this is not good to use the, the cylinder that was used for so welding for any kind oxygen or, uh, or, uh, or helium or argon or whatever whatever gas you are going to use. Okay, so um, the, in, in Italy, but is in Europe, uh, generally this uh, uh, information that are, that are available around, uh, around Europe, uh, but also in the US, they have this kind of, uh, of oxygen. Uh, we have uh, different uh, types of oxygen, uh, based on the purity and based also on the on the price uh, because of course the, the 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 purer the oxygen the more expensive it is but generally it is not necessary to uh, buy the extra puro meaning the extra oxygen uh, but is enough to have oxygen uh, like the 3.5 of the high speed because the only thing is the the concentration of the of the um, contaminant inside. As you can see here from the, uh, from the slide, uh, carbon monoxide is always taken uh, in consideration and this below uh, one ppm. Let me see using the graphs chromatography uh, purity that is 99.95, it must be below uh, one ppm. So that is the most important. Uh, the other important uh, information are the, the water, the H2O, uh, that is generally below 0 0.5 or 5 ppm. Uh, just for giving you the idea, uh, <clears throat> uh, 40 ppm uh, of oxygen uh, of uh, humidity is, uh, is the, the, the typical concentration of the air. Uh, of the compressed air with a good compressor, so it means that is and that is extremely considered extremely dry. So this is very very dry oxygen. So uh, whenever you you go buying your your oxygen, uh, just be aware of which kind of oxygen are you ordering, which kind of oxygen uh, the gas provider are providing you. Because as I told you, if you are in Europe or in the US. We have a good control. We have. Uh, we are quite sure that we we buy good oxygen. But if you are in Thailand, if you are in uh, uh, Egypt uh, or, um, or in Malaysia, Indonesia, or, or other other countries, you know, uh, it's not so uh, so easy to get uh, uh, good oxygen. So you must ask the purity, you must ask the grade, you must ask for all this information if you want to be in a safe side. Okay, that is extremely important. Well, um, where does the, the oxygen uh, come from? The oxygen generally uh, comes from um, uh, distillation process uh, you see in the in the in the picture here on the side of the slide uh, that's a that's a big plant for uh, distilling 
for distillation, for making distillation of, of air. Uh, generally, the air is distilled, then is uh, is cooled down, is chilled down at around 200 degrees negative uh, Celsius, and then uh, a different uh, height of the of the of the tower. Uh, the gas start distilling. It's like more or less the same uh, for the distillation of oil, the crude oil, uh, that from where we have the petrol, uh, we have the diesel for our car. Uh, the, the concept is, uh, is generally the same. Uh, the difference uh, is that uh, we are talking about uh, cryogenic gas, meaning uh, very, very uh, cold. Um, and in this way, uh, we can have the, the oxygen, uh, the liquid oxygen, and then the liquid oxygen is, uh, of course, is kept in a, in, a, in a vessel that are chilled, that are very, very cold, and then it can be gasified for uh, uh, use, uh, for, for, for being put in a, in a cylinder or in, a, in, a, in at, ambient, at, ambient pre, at ambient pressure and ambient temperature. Um, or the other way of, of, of getting oxygen is just, uh, let me say, filter air. Uh, you know that air is composed by uh, more or less 21% of oxygen and uh, more or less 79% of nitrogen. Then there are other uh, small contain other gas like CO2, argon, uh, helium, but very, very small amount. But generally what, they, what is used is the, uh, the membrane, uh, a, kind, a kind of a membrane uh, that uh, just uh, separate the oxygen from the from the other components, and and then the, the side of the oxygen is compressed and maybe liquefied or uh, just compressed. Uh, there are two main big families of systems. The one is the uh, PSA, that it is the pressure swing absorption, uh, that is uh, the, the system that they use some azeolitic, they call uh, layer stones, that uh, retain oxygen when they are in pressure and then they release oxygen when they are um, with negative pressure. And uh, in this way, this is why it's a swing going up and down with the pressure, uh, these uh, special stones release oxygen. Then there is a double filtration and uh, uh, at the end, uh, going uh, over and over many times on the same uh, bed of azeolitic, you have the pure oxygen. Or other, otherwise, we have the membrane system. The membrane system, uh, probably you are familiar with that because of the system that is used in the nitrox compressors. So they are uh, some uh, tube, but we are we will talk better on the, on the in the fourth lesson in the fourth lecture uh, where we we will show how this this membrane works they are just some filaments that are hollow, hollow inside they are whole and um, when they go under pressure around from 5 to 12 bar uh, the, the material of the of the of this uh, pipe of this uh, filament uh, just uh, let oxygen and uh, nitrogen goes in a different path so you have at the top of the membrane that you, you, you get the uh, nitrogen and then the, the side of the membrane where you have, when you get the, the oxygen. Um, air with nitrogen, air with oxygen. So in this way, you can uh, uh, increase the concentration of, uh, of oxygen or increase the concentration of nitrogen, depending on uh, the use that you, uh, you are using the system for. But anyway, uh, these, are the, these are the main system for, uh, for, uh, for, having, uh, for having the oxygen that is necessary for our blending operation. Um, the three types, as we were uh, saying before, uh, of breathing, breathable oxygen are the, the pharmacopoeia, so the medical one, the aviator grade, and the uh, food grade. Uh, why I'm saying that? Because the, uh, 
the the medical one in the pharmacopeia as i told you is a it is a, these are rules that are written at around 1930 of the last century so these are uh, these of course uh, but they are they are still valid because you know uh, that is the oxygen grade that could be delivered in the hospital uh, typically the oxygen is 99.5 percent the at the time was a very very high and pure oxygen with the technology that, that was available now we can get 99.999 percent of oxygen but at the time 99.5 was extremely uh, pure oxygen for the for the standard of the time a co2 before below 300 ppm uh, same uh, same consideration i i i gave you before so 300 is a, a quite high concentration because it's uh, uh, it is the concentration of CO2 that was around 30 years ago in the air, in the ambient, now it's around 400, but okay, at the time uh, it was something that um, that was available, and that is good for breathing because it's a, it's a very low, does not affect um, the, our health in any, any, any way. Uh, CO must be uh, below 5 ppm, uh, that is uh, important as well. Uh, and the water must be below 76 ppm, that more or less are 48 milligram per cube meter. Uh, just for giving you the idea, the EN 12021, that the norm that we are going to talk also uh, in this uh, lecture that we already uh, spoke during the nitrox uh, course, uh, is the, the concentration that is allowed, the air, con the, con the concentration of humidity that is allowed in the cylinder that you may breathe um, uh, for the for the air and uh, it's extremely 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 low amount just for giving you the idea is 10,000 times less the concentration of uh, humidity that you have in our office now in in your in your place now uh, that means that it must be very very dry very very dry for uh, for using for being put in the oxygen or in the air um, the other the other typical uh, oxygen available as i told you is a vietor grade that the only difference is that is a dryer and uh, the food grade uh, uh, in Europe uh, we have the directive uh, EC 96 77 uh, that states you know the way of using uh, oxygen and generally is used for fermentation and aged uh, wines or uh, for form the yeast in the, in the breweries for 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 making the beer um, so this is the oxygen that may be used uh, as i was telling you the uh, okay the aviator grade is identical to the medical uh, to the pharmacopeia uh, and the food grade it's just drier. Um, the only the only reason uh, that must be drier is because the aviator grade oxygen is generally delivered to the to the um, crew or of, of an aircraft or the airplane or in case of, of emergency to the to the uh, um, to the passengers of, of an airplane and. Uh, as is delivered with high flow, uh, that means that the temperature of the regulator may go down, very down, uh, if there is some uh, humidity inside some water, uh, going down with the, with the temperature, this water may uh, create ice, and then in this case may lock the, uh, the flow of oxygen, so meaning that they can stop. Uh, so this is why uh, the, the, the requirement of the aviation grade oxygen is extremely dry. It must be around zero uh, ppm of around one or two ppm of, um, of uh, water. Because, of, of course, when, when it's delivered, it doesn't have to, to lock the, uh, the system, the delivering system to the, to the passengers. Uh, but for our, for our scope that uh, for blending is okay if we use the 
the aviator grade because there is no um, is is not uh, is is not uh, let <laughs> is good right we can we can use with no problem uh, uh, even if uh, I generally when we speak about uh, oxygen with our gas supplier we we never are you know, asked to use this aviator grade. It's only available mainly in the US, in Canada, in South Africa, or in uh, in Australia. Uh, the rest of the, the world, they use medical and maybe food grade for for um, for breathing, you know. But if you can just use the just use the medical that you are on the safe side, you know, wherever you are. Okay, uh, let's talk now about the uh, liquid oxygen. Um, liquid oxygen is um, is just oxygen that is uh, chilled down uh, below 183 negative uh, temperature, and uh, it gets into uh, liquid state. Uh, it comes from generally uh, from the distillation operation of air, and uh, generally are is contained in the in the vessels like the one you are seeing there. This is a big one. Uh, this is a Dewar vessel uh, that are uh, they have a double uh, thickness of insulation, of course, because doesn't have to 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 go up with the temperature. And the good thing. The very good thing of liquid oxygen that they have a very high rate of content of oxygen. Just for giving you an idea, uh, one liter of liquid oxygen release 172 liter of gas at normal pressures, meaning standard pressure, one atmosphere, one bar, and uh, 20 um, 20 degrees of temperature. So uh, it means that one liter of, of oxygen or liquid oxygen is the equivalent of a cylinder of one liter of oxygen gas at 80, 70, 872 bar. Uh, okay, so uh, that is extremely, extremely important. That just applying the boil law. Uh, it's important to know uh, that if you uh, don't let the uh, liquid oxygen to naturally evaporate, uh, increasing the temperature will increase the pressure. <laughs> will increase eight to eight seven two times eight hundred seventy two times uh, the pressure. So that is extremely risky. Uh, I don't know how many uh, of us have a cylinder that can uh, stand uh, at nine hundred bar, quite nine hundred bar. You understand? So, uh, and of course, this is why it is contained in the Dewar. Uh, vessel, uh, the flask that are uh, they are not uh, totally sealed. They have a valve, a releasing valve. So in uh, in case the pressure uh, increase, that happens normally, uh, the oxygen is released in the in the atmosphere. And the other problem is it is very unstable, of course, because it's uh, it's not easy uh, to keep uh, liquid oxygen uh, in. Uh, in, in the in the dual vessel. Just for giving you you the idea, um, all the, the hospital generally uh, they have a system for liquid oxygen because they they have uh, mainly every day or every two or three days they have a, a, a truck a big truck coming with the pure um, liquid oxygen. They, they put the pure oxygen in the in the vessel and then they gasify and then they deliver to the to the to the normal use and uh, it's uh, it's not possible to keep for more than seven days or four days depending on how well is the coating of the of the vessel uh, to keep the liquid oxygen after four days the vessel is totally empty even if it was kept in the uh, right temperature and everything the oxygen evaporate there is no way of keeping the liquid for a long time um, but anyway the, the 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 most important thing is that you know the source uh, the source of oxygen uh, any questions by now everything is clear clear okay so let's go ahead 
Let's go to the second uh, to the second big topic of today. Uh, that is the 40% rule. Uh, probably the, all of you, uh, diver, technical divers, blender, not blender, have uh, heard about this this regulation. The, the the question is very easy. So, at what concentration does a gun uh, does a gas become dangerous to handle? Uh, Meaning, uh, how and uh, which is the concentration of oxygen uh, that we can handle in a safe way? Um, this is not just uh, this is not just theory, because of course when you uh, when you handle uh, oxygen, uh, you must be very careful for the reason that we are going to uh, to tell, but also because in the um, uh, in the industry, you know, it's uh, it's expensive to use uh, equipment that they, that are uh, treated for oxygen because we are talking about different uh, material, different uh, fabric, different uh, uh, gasket, different OR, uh, different uh, grease for lubricating, for lubricating. So there are many many uh, things, and of course, the the higher the oxygen is possible the higher the oxygen concentration is possible to be handled uh, safely uh, the, the 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 cheaper it is for the for the diving operation and uh, this is why at the beginning of the the nitrox area in uh, era in the around um, 1990-1989, uh, there were some studies that were hand handled by NOAA, the American uh, Organization uh, for uh, Atmosphere and um, the, ocean, uh, the Ocean, and also from NASA, from the space. They were uh, they doing tests uh, which uh, kind of uh, concentration of oxygen uh, would be safe to carry. In the diving industry, we generally uh, generally accept that if we use, we handle oxygen below 40%, we don't need to use uh, uh, any special uh, cylinder clean for oxygen, any special uh, uh, hose, any special regulator, and so on. But is this valid in all over the world? Is this valid for all the application? Uh, being honest with you, diving is the only industry that uh, allow us to do this. Uh, in the rest of the of the <coughs> organization of the industry, uh, generally oxygen is considered uh, dangerous that must be handled as it was pure over 23%. Uh, the European Industrial Gases Association, the EGA, uh, states 23.5. The RINA, the Italian Classification Ship Register, uh, talk about 23%. Uh, so this is extremely, uh, extremely challenging for us because uh, why do we accept the 40% rule? And in case of accident, <clears throat> this rule will be accepted by the judge or uh, we can be issued uh, for uh, for this, um, I, I I went through and then uh, we discussed it with many uh, colleagues about this in the, in the past. And the only regulation, the written regulation that about the uh, forty percent rules is the NOAA standard, the American standard. Uh, that in the in the paragraph seven point six six, page one hundred twenty of the manual <clears throat> of the edition two thousand seventeen, and also in paragraph seven seven two, page one two one, they states that you can use uh, safely oxygen at forty percent. Okay, uh, if you are in an Anglo-Saxon world, uh, it works. But if you are in Italy or if you are in other uh, EU country where there is not. Uh, a, a local regulation about that, uh, it would be, uh, let me say, challenging to 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 let the judge accept in case of an accident uh, this rule. So be careful. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, the research that was uh, run in the late 70s, 60s, and uh, 70s. Um, in the hyperbaric chambers, that is the other environment where uh, the pure oxygen under pressure is used, uh, 
there are some organizations, some American organizations that did test and provide us with a Cook diagram. A Cook diagram is not a um, very uh, known uh, diagram, but I have it. If someone is interested, I can uh, I can give you. It's just a gut diagram that uh, uh, at any concentra at any concentration and any pressure of oxygen with the temperature, uh, which is the risk of explosion, the risk of deflagration. So, and um, going uh, below 10 bar and 100% uh, oxygen is considered safe. And uh, at 40% oxygen, 39% oxygen, at any temperature, any pressure up to 200 bar is considered safe. So with this, uh, with, the, with this evidence, you know, you can handle, you can keep handling the oxygen at 40% with the normal compressor, normal uh, uh, cylinder, uh, regulator, hose and uh, hoses and everything is, is used. But of course, the air that you mix uh, uh, must be oxygen compatible. Oxygen compatible means that it doesn't have to have a, a contaminant. Uh, the contaminant uh, that are stated in the EN 12021 in the norm, uh, that means uh, 5 ppm carbon monoxide, 0 0.5 milligram per cube meter of oil, and, and so on. Someone needs to say something? Yes. Um, yeah. This, Arthur, this regulation, the 40% rule. Yeah. In previous lectures, we were told. I think we had the, we had discussed this um, with um, uh, Louisa. Louisa yeah, Louisa. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we talked about the the standards, the EN standards, yeah. and one of the standards um, I forgot which one, but I can find it if you want. Um, states that over twenty one percent, it must be treated as oxygen. Yeah. So, so that sort of, you know, uh, in the in the European Union, it, it does not allow us to use the forty percent rule. Yeah, it's correct, uh, Arthur. Uh, I know very well, uh, <laughs> Luisa, and we had a long discussion with Luisa about that, but uh, we are in two different uh, uh, point of view. Uh, Luisa is a lawyer, is a, have a big experience, uh, and uh, of course, give us all the information from the, from the law point of view. I'm an engineer, and I give you the information from the, from the physics point of view. Uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, of course, uh, it would be nice uh, to consider uh, everything over 21 or 23 percent, you know, it doesn't change so much, uh, as oxygen compatible, oxygen cleaned, and so on. But we have also to, uh, to take care of the, of the reality of the thing. Sometimes it's not possible to have... Uh, uh, dedicated oxygen, dedicated uh, uh, hose, dedicated uh, um, uh, dedicated system, you know, totally clean for oxygen, you know. And uh, the best, of course, would be to have everything cleaned. That you know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't say anything about that. But I have also to say that this regulation is valid in all the Anglo-Saxon world. You know, in America, in the U.S., in Canada, in uh, U.K. Now that is out of the of the union, in uh, in uh, in Australia, in South Africa, and so on. So you can easily and uh, safely use the forty percent rule. The big problem. Uh, that we agreed with uh, with Luisa is that there is no regulation. Uh, there is not a standard that says, okay, over 21%, you cannot use any uh, oxygen, uh, not oxygen compatible material. Okay, does not exist in Europe. Does not exist. It is just, uh, a, a, let to say, a way of covering our, let me say, bottom, you know, our S in case of accident. Uh, from the physics point of view, if you use a 40% rule, you are in the safe side. So this is, a, this is extremely, extremely important. So uh, no accident would happen. Then, of course, if happened for any other reason and uh, 
uh, the judge find you that you use the 40% rule, maybe that could be some uh, uh, that could be some problem. No, understand, uh, Arthur. Uh, yes. So basically, um, using but using the 40% rule yeah. in the EU when we are operating under yeah, the so we are operating now yeah. is is actually breaking the, the norms the european norms uh, if you the, if you are not if you're not treating over 21 percent as yeah. as as oxygen you are effectively breaking breaking the law so to say uh d depends on the country uh, in Italy, for instance, this regulation is not uh, uh, is not a regulation. You know, uh, I told you we discussed with uh, we discussed with Luisa about this. Uh, I'm not saying that Luisa is wrong. Um, I, I'm saying that Luisa is right. Uh, but but uh, from the physics point of view, using the forty percent rule, it's safe. So said that, of course, uh, everybody of us can choose, you know, what to do. Uh, of course, if we blend the air and the nitro for ourselves, uh, uh, you know, nobody, uh, if you don't sell, let me say, uh, your, your nitrox, there is no problem. But if you do that in a diving center and you are in Europe, uh, I would say uh, better if you follow the Luisa rule. I mean, not Luisa, but the rule of the 21%, 23% of oxygen. But being a manager, being, you know, uh, let me say, uh, well uh, trained people, you know that up to 40%, you are not having any risk, any kind of risk. So uh, understand, uh, Arthur, it's up to you yes. to balance. Uh, uh, the knowledge, uh, the balance, the physics, and the balance, the uh, the rules that are that are uh, that are available. Yeah, but but as we say, you have to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And Correct. To God, what belongs to God. <laughs> you are <laughs> you are explaining to us from the physics point of view, but we have to be very careful from Caesar. <laughs> Absolutely, you must be, and okay. uh, because accident will could happen, and then you must be very careful. But later on, when you will see the picture that I will going to show you about the accident, maybe you will consider also the forty percent rule as a not a valid rule. Uh, but uh, you know, also don't 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 uh, forget. Uh, don't forget that the the problem is that uh, um, the, the problem with the with the regulation is that if there is no uh, law, let me say a law, and there is no, uh, you are always in the in the gray zone. No? You know, the gray zone that you don't know is a Caesar is God. <laughs> Where are we? You know. But anyway, yes, after, exactly. I, I I tell you, uh, Luisa, of course, gives you the uh the the information for being on the safe side i give you the information from being on the safe side from the technical point of view from the engineer point of view and from the engineer point of view i can say that don't be afraid using uh, oxygen over uh, uh, below 40 percent so that is the that is the the, the message I, I want to i want to give you understand uh, no, I, I, under, I understand you perfectly because from the physics point of view, even using higher percentages Correct. of 40% Correct. can be safe as well. But the rule was 40% and we always did with 40%. Correct. And uh, I, we, we, I know people who, who still do it to this day, they regularly blend um, with not oxygen clean material, mm, not oxygen safe material, putting pure oxygen and this and that, which doesn't. Th there are other things in the in the equation, not only the percentage, but yeah. being having a rule to go by is you know there is there is a cutoff point. Um, but but unfortunately. Because of Caesar, you have to be careful from this rule, yes? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes uh, Arthur, you are, uh, you are totally right. I, I totally agree what you say. 
Uh, but I, 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 I'm giving you the technical point of view, okay? So the technical point of view is that you may handle in a safe way. Then, of course, Caesar does not allow us to have more than 21%, let's say, okay. But I, I tell you that uh, in all the diving center and all the diving organizations, the well organized, uh, all of them have a separated cylinder for nitrox and separated cylinder for air from air, you know? and uh, it is not generally mixed, uh, mixed up. But um, from the point of view of the of CSER point of the law, I, I, I don't say anything. I totally agree with you, you know, but, you know, mm -hmm. your organization, you must know all the information from the technical point of view and from the legal point of view. And of course, you are free to decide. <laughs> of course, uh, if you break the rules, the, the, the low, then you go over 20%, 21% using the standard equipment. Okay, maybe you are breaking the rules, uh, but you are not breaking the physical rules. That is extremely important, you know. So it means that you are in a, that you are in a safe oh, side. Oh. Hold on, let, let, let me check something. I, how many more Maltese are, are in the lecture? There is Damien. You shouldn't tell us we are free to decide because then we take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, from the from the okay, uh, from my point of view, I cannot say. Oh no, don't follow the Italian rule or the EU rule. You know, you must follow that. But from the technical uh, point of view, okay, from the technical I point understand. of view. Is is not dangerous. Okay, understand what there's I say. There's <laughs> <to> complicated. <it. laughs> yeah, also, to go ahead, guys. Also, into also, the discussion. Yeah. Also, if if you go ahead with the if you go uh, to US uh, or you go to other countries like in uh, Red Sea or in uh, uh, Thailand, whenever you go, the the you you can use the forty percent rule. You know, and then. Where, where, where you are in the where, where you sit in the moment, you apply the rule that you want. Okay, but I told you from the point of view of technical, it's safe. That's all. Said that, okay, you follow the local regulation that must be followed, of course. Understand, uh, guys. Okay. Oh, and also an important thing, yeah. guys, is that uh, uh, the forty percent rules also have uh, more than thirty years. Uh, of uh, let me say quite 40 percent 40 years of use with no no big problem with no accident so that that makes us feel more comfortable with it okay so guys uh, um, it, it, this is interesting this topic is interesting because uh, how does the 40 percent rule affect the gas blender uh, this affect in the sense that the mass blender must be very careful of pressure, temperature, equipment design, flow rate, contamination, uh, components uh, uh, compatible with oxygen, uh, procedure, and everything, everything, all of this, not only the 40% rule, play an important role in the, in the blend uh, safety. Understand? So uh, the 40% rule is just one of the parts. Uh, all the other are extremely, extremely important. Okay, and now we are we are, we are going to go ahead with the uh, with the um, with the discussion. Okay, uh, now uh, image that we are in a place where the forty percent rule is accepted, or uh, image where it's not accepted. Anyway, uh, we consider that we can consider safe. Uh, to handle oxygen if we remove all the necessary ingredients for five for fire meaning then uh, a blender can safely warm concentration of oxygen about 40 or 21 or 23 depending on where we are if we take care of the oxygen uh, of, of ox oxygen components that may affect fire or may affect our operation okay so let's go now to the description of what is an uh, 
what is a deflagration, what is a detonation. Uh, oh, here we, you, you, you can see a picture on the right that uh, looks like uh, a glow, but is not, guys. Uh, this is a real picture uh, that I received from uh, one of my friends that have an accident with, uh, with oxygen. Uh, he was running a pump, a, a booster that blew up. Uh, the booster blow up and uh, look what happened to the to his hand. Look what uh, happened to his face. He was totally, totally, totally uh, burned. Uh, so uh, I, I want to put this this picture. I wanted to put this picture because I want to see what happened if you have an accident with oxygen. So and uh, it's extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous, guys. And it could happen anytime. Any time when you handle oxygen could happen what happened to my friend there with the picture. So be extremely, extremely uh, careful. Uh, luckily, just for, for telling you, the guy now is totally recovered. Uh, he didn't have any problem. He didn't affect, uh, he didn't have any any problem on the hand, on the face, on the eyes. Everything was fine. But he, he, it took six months for recovery, you know, and uh, many surgery for removing all the, all the stuff uh, that was uh, uh, pumped, that was blown in, uh, in his face in his, his hands. Anyway, what is a deflagration? Deflagration is a ferocious fire um, uh, with enough heat uh, to potentially melt an opening in the pressure containing system, resulting in a sudden release of pressure. Uh, generally, is a combustion that propagates through a gas or across a surface of a, a, a fabric or a material at subsonic speed. And it is driven uh, uh, by the transfer of heat or heat. That means uh, uh, that the, the deflagration is a, is a big fire uh, that is not so fast, but is extremely uh, hot. Let me use this, this kind of, this kind of, uh, of term. Detonation on the other side, is a supersonic combustion wave that consists of a shock wave driven by release of energy, much, much higher uh, speed than the, than the air, uh, than the speed of sound in air that can go up to Mach 5, so five times the speed of uh, sound in the air. And... Uh, of course, uh, it creates uh, an, an enormous uh, amount of energy that must be released. On the side, you can see a block of a compressor uh, that was uh, blasted because of the detonation of a compressor because of oxygen. Uh, because the guy, these uh, pictures come from Australia. Um, and then you can see the damage that the oxygen an oxygen uh, detonation can uh, create on the block of the compressor. So you can see uh, how the energy uh, is released, uh, we, how, how big it is. And then this is what's created thanks to the oxygen, not oxygen itself, but because of the oxygen ignition. Okay. Uh, what is ignition? At this point, uh, let's introduce this, uh, this work. It's a chemical reaction. Uh, that release energy as health, uh, there's heat, sorry, uh, that turns in the surface end to sustain the reaction. So uh, ignition is a, a, a spark, uh, an energy uh, that heat and that can create uh, the reaction both of uh, detonation or both of deflagration. Okay. Uh, the ignition, ignition sources are generally the heat of compression, and then uh, you easily can image, you know, when you, when you have a compressor, uh, the compressor heat the air because uh, there is an um, a, a increase of temperature during the process, the adiabatic process. Uh, there may be also because of the partis, particle impingement, uh, that means that there is uh, some uh, particle dust uh, or rust that could be 
heat, you know, we will talk later about, uh, about this. The frictional heating, uh, in case, uh, for instance, in a compressor where there are uh, the, the system that is not well looped or there is uh, some problem, that the friction can uh, increase the temperature and then we can make uh, ignition or uh, easily sparks, arcs, statics, you know, that may come <clears throat> They they come from the they come with the, uh, the with the activity that we, that we are doing you know but now we will talk about this later uh, how oxygen affect the combustion uh, as I told you oxygen itself doesn't burn uh, oxygen enhances the combustion increasing the intensity of fire and oxygen unfortunately gives no warning. So when there is uh, when there is explosion, when there is a detonation or deflagration, both with oxygen due to the oxygen, you don't have any warning. Everything goes well, and then immediately you have this kind of uh, of, of accident happen. So uh, this is why you must be extremely extremely uh, careful in advance, because. Uh, uh, after it happened, there is nothing you can do. Okay, so that means that you must uh, uh, design in a proper way the equipment. You have to uh, work in a proper way to make. You have to handle handle the the oxygen and the, all the operation in a very very good way. Okay, and this is why we are spending all this time uh, introducing you and training you on these uh, activities. Okay. Um, okay, anyway, uh, this is the triangle that I believe that you already have seen in the in all the um, five fighting courses that may you may have attended. Uh, that's uh, the triangle on how it's possible uh, to have a, a burning or explosion or uh, any kind of accident. Do you mean to have a combustible material? You must have the ignition source, and then you must have oxygen that gives the combustible material the, the fuel to burn. Understand? So it means that you need the fuel or combustible material, material, an ignition source, and then an oxidizer that, in the case, we have the oxygen that is pure oxidizer. <laughs> okay. Uh, the main source of ignition are the heat of compression, uh, particle, particle impingement, uh, friction heating, hard sparks, and uh, statics. Uh, it's not difficult to, to understand. I'm uh, uh, oh, no, sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, let, let me talk about the heat of compression. Uh, the heat comes uh, generally from a compressor when you uh, increase the pressure. Uh, you know, uh, everybody, that you know when we when you when we feel uh, the cylinder and uh, uh, the cylinder uh, get uh, warm, uh, get hot, and this is why we need to to chill down to cool the operation. There are some compressors. Uh, all the compressor have a system for uh, for chilling, you know, for cooling the the the, the block. Uh, but if there is any any kind of, of, of problem, there is no the the compressor is not working well. Uh, you may have this kind of heat generated from uh, from the air that is not released in the system in the in the releasing system of the compressor, and then uh, the air coming from the compressor can increase. But also, if you use uh, a booster, uh, just a pump, you know, uh, with a pure gas like uh, oxygen uh, or uh, helium or argon, <clears throat> and you pump, when you pump it in the in the booster, uh, you increase the temperature because you know you are doing an adiabatic process. Uh, adiabatic means uh, that there is no uh, exchange of uh, of heat, no exchange of transmission of heat. So it means that the you immediately increase the pressure and the gas increase the temperature. So if the process is not under control, if this heat is not properly released, may increase the temperature and may uh, ignite, may 
create an ignition of the uh, of the material of the comburent material okay and the, the big problem is that it happens very quickly because the the the, the temperature uh, change is extremely fast um, if you compress uh, and the, the, the more you compress, the, 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 you increase the pressure, the more fast is this heating that happens. So it is important, extremely important, to be very, very careful. Uh, during this, uh, you know, uh, when, we, when we show all the slides, you, you see all the result of the, of the compressor uh, blasting. You, you, you see here on the, on the right, you know, all the images of <laughs> how the compressor were, <clears throat> was affected for this blast of oxygen inside, you know. And uh, you see here another. This is the top of the filter. <laughs> you see how is how is broken. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> how to prevent heat of compression? <clears throat> uh, generally, when you when you blend, you know, when you blend uh, oxygen, generally you 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 have a, a big cylinder, uh, high pressure, 200 or 300 bar depends on what is available in your country. And then you, 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 you use a decanting hose, and then you go and, uh, and give the oxygen to the, to the singular cylinder. If possible, it's better to use a regulator instead of the valve. Uh, why? Because the regulators take also, um, reduce also the pressure. Uh, and reducing the pressure, the pressure, it reduces also the risk of having some problem with the with the oxygen. The valves have the big, the, are very very good. You know, they have a good advantage, but they also are very dangerous because from 300 bar you can go in just opening, you can go to three through to zero. You know, to the ambient pressure, and that is very very. Uh, you must be very careful when you use a valve with the, with the pure oxygen. You have to, to create a system doing that. First of all, you must be very, very slow. The valve always with oxygen must be open very, very slow. Uh, even if it's the, the, the cylinder of your, uh, of your side tank, of your bailout uh, cylinder, even if it's your uh, big cylinder that you are using for, uh, uh, for getting the oxygen for your blending, or if it's your, your bank, you know, your nitrox bank uh, that you have for refilling the cylinder of the divers of your, your customers, you know, must be extremely slow. Then you have also to create a space, you have to create a, a, a system where <clears throat> the pressure can go, can release in case of any accident. So in case of fire, you have to, to take an overpressure valve, you have to take something that can, in that case, uh, allow the fire and the gas that is uh, bursting going away, and that must be put away. So this is extremely important when you design a system, when you design a blending system for being on the on the safest possible side. Okay, but the most most important rule that I would like really you to remember for all this discussion is that to open to turn the valve very, very slowly. When you use oxygen, always be very, very, very slow, okay? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is another tip. Uh, oh, this is another picture of the of the filter, <laughs> of the filter tower. I was reduced, I was blast because of the, uh, because of the, the blasting of oxygen. Uh, uh, just be careful of the, of the cages, uh, the pressure cages, uh, must be put in area there as subject to uh, control it pressure. Means that, why this? Because generally when there is an accident, uh, the cage are the first item that start to blast, you know? And then on the, on the, on the cage, the, generally there is a, a glass you know, in front, that the glass uh, may be like bullets, you know, when they explode. So it's extremely important that you keep the, uh, the cages in a place where they must be in control. They could be in a place, their way could be uh, safe in case of any accident. 
put in a, in a location that is far from people that are far. Okay, uh, just saying that uh, having a, a pressure cage, close the valve, and then you open the valve very fast is not a good thing. You know, <laughs> it's extremely dangerous. Uh, okay, uh, the other the other source of the of the uh, of, of problem, they may be will be the particle impingement. So uh, is where the heat is generated as a particle that would strike and uh, and this uh, increase the, the 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 temperature and of course you may have rust and then you may have an ignition of the of the stuff and then you see on the right always what happened to the compressor that for that had this uh, this kind so uh, the main uh, the main issue uh, can come from rust dust dirty so what does it mean means that when you when you blend anything you must use new equipment they must be serviced regularly they must be cleaned and they must be extremely extremely reliable um, i would like you to have the, the possibility to visit a, a white chamber white chamber is a, what we call in our uh, in our industry the place where you clean the oxygen uh, when you clean something for oxygen service it's something that is like uh, like a surgery room you know very cleaned uh, the pressure is controlled there is a sticking uh, uh, sticking pavement uh, for avoiding dust going around you know so that is extremely important and now you understand why um, Okay, uh, how to prevent uh, particle impingement? Uh, uh, it may occur. It is uh, if if if, if, if uh, a small particle is uh, is put downstream in a, in a flow restriction in a restriction on the flow. Of course, the uh, it increases the pressure, increases the temperature, and then there is this ignition that is like a spark that goes inside. You know. Uh, the velocity of this uh, particle uh, that should be in physics that could be 46 meter per second let me say 50 uh, meter per second that is extremely high speed but it's very easy to have this speed in case of in case of pressure um, uh, what uh, we use for uh, avoiding this this problem generally what we suggest is to use uh, uh, alloys uh, that are uh, good for uh, for oxygen. Uh, we always think that the best is uh, stainless steel. Stainless steel is good. I don't say that is not good, but there are some uh, some uh, other uh, alloys that are better. The best uh, in absolute is the tungum. I don't know if someone of you knows tungum is a is a special bronze copper alloy. Uh, that looks like gold is a yellow is very nice and it is the safest uh, possible pipe you can use for oxygen under pressure uh, all the the pipes uh, uh, with a system of uh, 100 bar or 1000 bar 2000 bar of oxygen are used uh, are used with this tungum you know uh, but anyway for our pressure 200 bar pure uh, stainless steel is still good uh, unless, you know, of course, it must be clean, must be serviced. And um, uh, use filters. <clears throat> this is extremely important. Where is possible to put during the, alongside the, the compressing process, some filters for avoiding the particle to go, uh, to go freely, but to be stopped. And then, of course, use clean equipment uh, uh, for oxygen. Uh, frictional heating is on the other side, is a concentrated, located heating ca caused by flow restriction. Uh, and then it generally is, uh, is, uh, is provided when, uh, uh, when um, <coughs> gas speed up on a polymer, let me mean a plastic, and uh, goes in a, in, a, in a restriction. So, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, they can increase the temperature, and then, of course, can create the ignition for the for the stuff. Uh, sorry. Um, how to prevent uh, the frictional heating? Uh, visually inspect the valve and the regulator. Uh, listen for gas escaping as a closed valve. So when the system is in pressure here if there is any leakage 
And uh, of course, uh, don't crank down. So be slow when you open and when you close the valve. You see on the right uh, what happened to uh, to the third stage of the compressor, uh, the, the the cylinder you see, and uh, the piston <laughs> that was damaged by the uh, by by the heating, by the by the blasting of oxygen. Um, okay, the other the the cause for arcs, sparks, and static is generally is the uh, comes from the, uh, the 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 electrical electrical sparks that uh, comes from uh, poor insulation, uh, comes from switches, uh, or comes from static discharge, uh, or for lightning and thunder that could happen, you know, if you're blending in an open, in open field and uh, there is a thunder running, you know, be careful. What I suggest to you, and that must be done every time you, you, you work with, uh, with the blending system, all must be put on the ground, you know. There must be just a wire uh, connected to the to the earth, to the to the ground, for uh, let the electricity to go down. There must not be any potential, any increase of potential that may give a sparks. Okay. Uh, all the electrical equipment must be properly grounded, must be properly uh, and safely equipped and all must be connected to ground, okay? Uh, the ignition source, uh, I told you, are three, that are the mechanical impact, the thermal runaway, and the chemical reaction, okay? Uh, the example would be the chatter that sometimes occurs in some remote valve and actuator, if there is a, you know, an impact inside. Uh, the thermal runaway may be also the oil in the compressor uh, that exceed the flash point. Uh, this is why in the compressor we use uh, synthetic oil because they have a highest possible uh, temperature for ignition that is more than 400, 500 uh, degrees uh, Celsius degrees. The problem is that uh, sometimes uh, the uh, uh, the temperature of the air in the compressor, because the compressor is not well maintained, can go over. And then in case the, the, the temperature goes over 300, 400, may create ignition to the oil. Okay. Uh, and of course, the last is the reaction, the chemical reaction into the uh, into the, the, the filter. And then don't forget in the filter, you have a, a big source <laughs> of fire, that is the carbon. Carbon is extremely, extremely ignitable, you know, that it can be burned very easily, understand. Uh, how to prevent this ignition? That generally, the, the, the answer is very easy, you know, uh, that you have to have the maximum care of maintenance, service and maintenance. Okay, don't use any kind of item uh, of any kind of system for blending if it's not well maintained, if it's not well cleaned, if it's not well uh, operated, understand? That may, may lead to very, very bad, very bad trouble. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's one that we should finish now, uh, but we have other three, four, uh, um, uh, slides that are relative to the transport, to the cylinder, and to the uh, to the valves. Uh, would you like to to talk about this in the next lesson, or uh, you you want me to go ahead now? Up to you. I ah, know. For my me, side. Uh, do you have any other lesson now uh, running or? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so. I think nobody of us has more lessons. Okay, so I can go. I can go ahead. Uh, so these are other five minutes, ten minutes. If it's not a problem for you, I I, I go. Do I? Okay. Okay. So so. Yes, okay uh, for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, okay. Uh, Transport of oxygen and compressed gas uh, in all the world, they have the, the regulation, you know. Uh, in, uh, in Europe, there is the Directive 2008-68, uh, that, is, that is known as the ADR uh, 
that is uh, in France for Accord dangereux par route. Uh, that is uh, that is just a regulation that states uh, how you have to 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 carry the cylinder and the, generally the gas in in uh, in the road. And then there is you know the 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 signage uh, that must be used: the red uh, for the flammable, the green for the compressed, white uh, for toxic, white and black for corrosive, uh, yellow for comburent. That means it can be burn or inert, you know, that everything must know, uh, that the regulation have to be followed uh, in the place where you are. If you are in the EU, you must use that. Um, don't forget that if you have the cylinder in your, uh, in your car, uh, and if they are, if they are uh, properly uh, serviced, they have the stamp of the of the test of the testing they are safe to be carried okay so uh, this is this is uh, in the in the regulation so you you are in the in a, in a safe side of course if you carry a big amount of oxygen also be careful of the of the amount of problem in case of accident that you that you may have so take care of that and this is why generally it's better if you ask the gas supplier to bring to you, to carry to you in your diving center you, or in your uh, shop or in your organization, the cylinder, you know, because uh, you keep the responsibility of the transport to the other, you know, it's much, much better. Um, okay, the other information is the uh, the tagging of the, of the cylinder. This is the top of a cylinder. Uh, everybody of you know that is a, uh, inside when when you have a cylinder on top there are a lot of number a lot of uh, of letters uh, and around and then uh, this information is, is extremely important because they are the uh, the like the identity card of the cylinder uh, that says uh, the the the, the um, it says uh, uh, which is the the volume, uh, the the weight, uh, the the many many things. And in every every country, you have a different uh, uh, you have different regulation. Uh, for instance, the IMCA, that is the International Marine Consulting Association, that is the the most important association for the commercial diving. Uh, they states that the cylinder it is valid for worldwide. Uh, they states how the cylinder must be. Uh, tagged and how must be classified because if you are working in a place like uh, Europe or in the uh, US or in Anglo-Saxon when there is a regulation uh, you know what you have to write but in other countries there is no so if you go and work in another country IMCA suggests you which is as, what has to put on the on the cylinder uh, this is the, the gas uh, um, identification in you, uh, what must be uh, written. Uh, I'm sorry if this is in Italian, but I believe that you can understand uh, because there is a, is written uh, the countries, is written uh, the threat of the of the cylinder that must be also the the minimum thickness of the of the cylinder uh, which is the the weight uh, which is the norm which is the capacity the volume of the cylinder uh, which is the the serial number of the cylinder uh, which is the, the the pressure test which is the date of the last test and uh, which is the pressure that must be used, and the maximum pressure that must be used for, uh, uh, for being used. Uh, in the US, we have uh, three rows of identification uh, that gives you all the information about the transport, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the material with the, the cylinder is done, uh, the, the the weight of the cylinder and then also in the second row <clears throat> gives you also the regulation of the transport uh, the specification of the alloy uh, the service pressure of course in uh, in the us they use the psi they don't use bar uh, the serial number and then also the manufacturer then the last row, row the third that is the more the bigger on the bottom is the the month of manufacture the year uh, the mark of the of the inspector that did the inspection of the of the vessel, the year of manufacture, the capacity, and the weight. Okay. Um, in Europe, we have also 
the necessity of identify with the color uh, the top of the cylinder that must be uh, that may be uh, green, that may be white, that they may be brown. But generally, uh, when we use the, the cylinder, it arrives directly with the proper color. And for our breathing gas, <clears throat> we are not allowed to have to have any kind of uh, to have any kind of color for the cylinder that we use for diving. So uh, the most important that we follow all the rules for the uh, for the stuff. On the right, you can see uh, the sticker that is put on the on the cylinder of pure gas. Uh, you see that the, the green and the yellow tag is for the transport. And then there is all the regulation and then everything that is necessary to know in case of, uh, of a transport. Um, then the last uh, guys, so we arrived at the, at the valves. As you know, there are a big mess <laughs> running around the valves uh, because uh, in diving, uh, we use uh, generally with the, the DIN or the yolk, uh, but in industrial, in medical, uh, they have a different, uh, the different connection. Uh, also, the thread the, the, on the top of the cylinder, <clears throat> there is the 21 per 2, there is the 3 quarter, depends on when you are in the world. So always, always be careful when you service, when you use any, any cylinder, be absolutely sure that the thread is the compatible one with your, uh, with your cylinder. Never, never swap, you know, cylinder from one to the other because you may do some mistakes. Uh, leave these to the <coughs> service point that are, you know, they know how to do to install and to uh, to certify a cylinder. Uh, also, with the CE norm, with the with the European regulation, uh, with the PAD norm. Uh, now, when you do a test of a cylinder, you must bring the cylinder also with the valve, because the valve must be must be absolutely impressed. Uh, sorry, the cylinder must be uh, uh, checked with the valve. So this for avoiding that uh, a misconnection of valves that are not in the proper in a proper way. Okay. So uh, the other is the okay. Uh, every oxygen uh, cylinder have a different valve. Helium, air, nitrox, uh, they have different. For diving, we generally use the D. Uh, but for uh, nitrox, because nitrox, uh, we should use the M26. Uh, for all the oxygen over 22%. Uh, now we, we <laughs> Arthur, we are go back to the to the Luisa statement. If the norm is uh, accepted by law, you must use it. So you must use for nitrox uh, the M26 uh, D. If is not uh, uh, allowed, is it not a, a law? You can use the D or you can use the yolk. It depends on the local regulation. You understand? From the point of view of safety, they just uh, uh, the committee just issued the AN144, so meaning the D in uh, M26, <clears throat> just for avoiding mixing nitrox cylinder with the air cylinder. But as far as I know, guys, in all over the world, uh, the M26 is not a lot used, you know, in the world. We are still in a transition phase in Italy, for instance, where you can still use the, the DIN, you know, the, the standard DIN uh, for five on eight uh, things. So, guys, we finally arrived at the end of this first lecture. Uh, any question? So, no. okay. Yes. Okay. So I hope you I hope you well understood everything. Now I will sorry. Uh, sorry guy, can you repeat please? I think it's a background noise. Ah, okay, background noise. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, just for a quick review, today we talk about uh, ox we spoke about oxygen. Uh, we spoke about the forty percent rule. <laughs> we spoke about the op operational hazard. 
fire and deflagration and transport valve and the identification of the of the cylinder. Uh, now I will put also this uh, presentation, this uh, PowerPoint uh, slide in our common area, so you can download if you want. And then of course also the recording of this lecture will be available. So uh, thank you. If there is anything else, uh, and uh, thank you for your kind attention. And then of course if you have any any questions, just send me a message and then uh, in case not we'll see you on friday next friday okay thank you very much you're welcome you very bye much. bye thank you for thank your you. bye bye thank bye. you bye.